Hey guys, and welcome. We're going to delve into African Canadian history, and this won't just be for Black History Month. So please stick around, like, comment, and subscribe. And also don't forget to share. All right, now there isn't much documentation in Canadian history regarding him, but in approximately 1604 to 1606, Matthew da Costa arrived in what is now called Canada, or specifically Port Royal, Nova Scotia. Now here's a picture of him with a hat and a fully loaded beard. He was a free African man employed by French and Dutch traders as a translator, either accompanying Samuel de Champlain or Pierre Dugas de Mont. Now, it wasn't peculiar for Africans to act as translators, as this had been happening before this time. However, Matthew is very special in that in addition to knowing Portuguese, French, and also the Dutch language, he was also a translator with the First Nation peoples, suggesting that he'd been in the Americas before this trip. Some historians believe that the Costa served the Portuguese as an interpreter in the late 15th century and the French and Dutch later in the 17th century. Historians also believe that the Costa would have spoken Pidgin, which is a combination of Basque and the local indigenous languages. Although there is little evidence surrounding the Costa, historians note that he was kidnapped from, French, from the French in Holland around February or March of 1601. Da Costa is also recorded to have been put in prison. Although it is unclear why, historians suggest that it was matters of insolence, or in other words, having a rude or disrespectful behavior. This is absolutely groundbreaking to Canadian history and the narratives of and the narratives surrounding peoples of African descent in Canada and Canadian history because of the popular understanding that peoples of African descent only arrived in Canada with the Loyalists during the American Revolution of 1781 or through the Underground Railroad because of this awesome woman over here. This is Harriet Tubman and this is a picture of her and a lot of you guys are probably familiar with her but we'll get into her story later on. Matthew da Costa's arrival informed Canadians and the rest of the world that although his story may not be popular and we don't know a large portion about his life, he represents the inception of African peoples in Canada. All right, now to delve further into African Canadian history, we need to understand the concept of race as a social construct. What I mean by social construct is that society or persons of ranking have deemed race real. And in turn, it kind of stuck around just because of social agreement. In other words, ethnic groups were deemed as set apart from one another in a negative way, solely based on their physical appearance. In Winthrop Jordan's White Over Black, The White Man's Burden, he explains that long before Europeans had any contact with the with people who had a much browner complexion than them, it was of the understanding that black equated to negative associations like dirt, death, malignant, and more. And white, obviously, was related to purity. He goes on to say that black was an exaggerated term placed upon the peoples in Africa. He also states that he also states that Europeans first arrived in the 15th century. However, enslaving of Africans only began in the 16th century. Another example of early thought surrounding race was from Carlos Linnaeus, who was born 1707 to 1788 and who was a Swedish physician, botanist, and zoologist who created a new system of classification for all living things in 1735, where he wrote Systema Naturae, describing categories of ethnic groups. So he goes on to describe, and here is a example of his book. He goes on to describe Americanus as reddish choleric wide nostrils, 
paints himself with fine red lines and a scanty beard ruled by customs. Asia Tickus, melancholy, stiff, haughty, covered with loose garments and ruled by opinions. Africanus, black, hair black, frizzled, woman without shame, governed by caprice, or in other words, impulsive. Europeus, white hair long, flowing, gentle, covers himself with closed vestments and governed by laws. Now, what is most interesting is what he deems each group is governed by. But before we go on, I just want to make it clear that Americanus is in reference to First Nation peoples, Asia Ticus, Asia, Africanus, Africa, and Europeus, Europe. So for Americanus, he states that they, will, they are ruled by customs. Asia Ticus, ruled by opinions. Africanus, governed by impulses. Europeus, governed by laws. So already, just even looking at the last examples of every group, it is clear to see the hierarchy that is already being built just by looking at these categories of distinction. What is also interesting is that no one is really red or no one is black at all or white at all. It's just a lack of words that society or ruling class has placed upon certain peoples to justify racism, justify slavery, justify uh, discrimination, unfortunately. In addition to connotations associated with white and black, there was also the curse of Ham, which comes from the Bible found in Genesis 9, in where Noah had built an ark and was drunk and fell asleep, and one of Noah's sons, Ham, saw the nakedness of his father while the other brothers turned away while Noah was asleep, and when Noah woke up, he cursed Ham's son, Canaan. Uh, this is just a passage from Genesis 9, verse 20. Noah began to be a man of the soil. He planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backward, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Now, this has no relation to skin tone whatsoever, and it is a poor interpretation of the verse, and it could not even fit into the understanding of Christianity, because as soon as someone declares faith in Jesus Christ, they become brothers and sisters in Christ meaning that ethnicity or anything like of that like matter does not justify any hierarchy. Everyone is one in Christ. It is just something clearly, as we can say, that Europeans used to justify slavery and racism. So again, thank you guys so much for sticking around this far. And I just want to remind you guys that this isn't solely just for Black history. It's going to be going on past Black history until the wheels fall off. <laughs> so please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, let all that you do be done in love.